Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another edition of the development updates, updates for my space, 2D space sim, space game, I haven't, I haven't actually thought of a good name for it yet still. Um, there have been a lot of changes since I made the last video, I think the last video was a good couple months ago and I've still been working on this, um, yeah, over that time. Um, especially recently, the last couple of weeks, I put a good um, hundred, maybe two hundred hours into it. There's full. The changes consist of like a full UI system is now implemented, bar a couple things that I still need to implement. Um, I've massively optimized particle effects and explosions, made them look a little bit nicer. Although there's still some work to be done there. Uh, trading systems now implemented, ship outfit system is fully implemented, um, station, the station spawning algorithm has been massively improved, and so I'm going to show you guys all that stuff uh, today. The options menu currently doesn't work, but that will be operational soon enough. There's also a saving and loading system that's, that's working pretty well now as well. Um, so, yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's start a new, a new game. Uh, there's also music, as you can hear. The, the, this is music that I paid for the, the rights to use. Um, so that's fully implemented now as well. I'm multi-threading a couple things. Oh, and also the background looks a lot nicer too. Wait, let me show you the background. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me, let me slow down and make a save. For convenience sake. Velocity to zero. Okay, I'll do. Um, yeah, so the background is. I think I had parallax before, but uh, it looks a hell of a lot nicer now. So you can see there's multiple different layers, different parallax levels. Um, there's actually kind of like star generation layer at the at the very back. So yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, let me show you the main attraction. Let's load this save. Oh, and all the stars are gone. Okay, well, that's something I need to work on. Um, so here's the new um, station generation algorithm. I'll show you a couple of examples here. Let's go dock at this station. So I don't know if you could dock at stations in the last video. I don't. I don't think you could. You can now dock at stations and do various things inside of them. By far, the longest amount of time I've spent uh, on development between the last video and now is on uh, the user interface. Writing your own user interface classes in C++ is really time-consuming and difficult. It's it's not something I recommend, to be honest. If you can find some way around it then please please do so because my god I probably spent I want to say somewhere between 200 and 300 hours on developing a, um, developing how many I don't know how many different classes maybe 20 different classes of, of different UI elements GUI elements and stuff they're all quite uh, abstract abstracted though so I could in theory use them for anything else I want to in future which is nice I could literally use it for any C++ application so that library's built but yeah building your own building your own GUI library is not something I'd recommend anyway so we're at Herald Station we've just docked we can undock uh, you have to get within a certain docking radius, and then you just press enter and you dock at the station. I'll probably include some sort of animation for that later. So these are the two big things that I've been working on. The trade screen. Uh, so I've got a couple of goods in here. The merchants spawned in with a certain number of credits. And all these different uh, goods they can buy and sell. I've got these scroll boxes. So if I want to, I can just shift click, sell all this stuff. And you know, I'm going to buy some some cool stuff buy three large chain guns. Um, I'm going to buy a large fission reactor. Any super grade plutonium. There we go. I'll buy some super grade plutonium as well. Um, and three large thrusters. Oh, I don't have enough money. Fine. 
of that. Okay, I can buy that. How much do these cost? They cost 80 grand a piece. Fuck. Okay, hold on. Let's equip. So all you all you need to do to um, the tra the trading screen it's actually very it's very simple. You have a, you click on something, you have a sliding bar, uh, and then you can accept or cancel the trade. It tells you the net value of the trade and you're selling. So uh, here's the sell value. It's green. That means that that's gonna be money credited to you. Um, likewise, if you're buying something, obviously it's the opposite. And you can sell and buy things at the same time, and the the net value will get dynamically updated. Um, if you shift click rather than just click, uh, you can just dump the entire stack in there, which is quite handy. Obviously, it won't let me buy it. I don't have enough credits. So I've only got eighty thousand. That's four million worth. Um, so yeah, on the outfit screen, let me put this back. Um, you've got engines, weapons, and generators currently. There's probably going to be more uh, unique items coming uh, coming soon. Uh, here's your ship. Um, all you have to do is, if you want to see the stats, you just hover over the stuff that you already, you've already got installed. It'll tell you the various statistics on each of those. So here we go. Max power is um, 50,000 kilowatts from this generator. And as you can see, we've got... 100,000 kilowatts, probably need to put commas in there or make it megawatts or something, make it more readable, but uh, anyway, so 100,000 kilowatts, that's obviously a lot better. When you change the reactors, um, it'll automatically swap in the correct fuel type, um, and it will take the best, f there's currently no refueling system, I need to implement that as well, but basically what suffices at the moment is... Uh, you've got weapon grade, reactor grade, fuel grade, super grade, plutonium, and then you also have hydrocarbons for the hydrocarbon generators. Um, what it will do is when you outfit um, and change your reactor, it will automatically take the best fuel type that you have in your inventory and use that to fill the, the, the reactor or generator with, which is quite handy. Um, anyway, let me outfit these large chain guns. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just keep that. We'll have one large and one medium, so we don't use too much available power. Um, and then what I can do is... Why did it say that that was... Okay. There was a little bug there. But it didn't, didn't update the screen. I think it thought those were fission reactors or something. Um, let's buy two of these large thrusters. So max thrust is 60,000 kilonewtons. And it's only 10,000 for the medium ones, so I mean the thrust is way higher. Might as well sell those as well. Yeah, we've got 160,000 now. So now I can undock, as you can see. Oh yeah, well, that's in a weird place. Okay, another bug. Good. <laughs> Great. That's in the wrong place. Why is that happening? Okay, whatever. I'll fix that. Um, so, anyway, as you can see, now we've got, um, as before, you can dynamically allocate power between engines and, and weapons. We've got two medium chain guns and one large chain gun. And they both have different rotation speeds, as you can see. Reload those. Um... Yeah, so the only other thing is explosions. Uh, that's the main thing. So, as you may be able to tell, each individual particle from the explosions have a collision mesh now. So that means that... Um, and, and they'll damage you individually as well, rather than just having some dumb explosion radius, which is what I had before. The explosions are now simulated, um, which I think is pretty cool. It also looks pretty awesome as well, so as you can spawn in. You can see how the particles are kind of getting eaten by my ship, which I've modified to have a lot of health, so it's not going to die, but it probably would be dead already. I can just want to run on top of my ship as well. There we go, look, literally all the particles are just being absorbed by the ship's heart. This is only uh, the small explosion. Um, I 
We've got a couple of big, medium, and ultra-sized explosions as well. You know what, actually, let me, um... Let me, let me show you those. Uh, yeah, let's do Ultra. Just recompile that. Shouldn't take too long. Yeah, the Ultra explosion looks pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Um, I've massively optimized the explosions because they were causing a lot of lag before the different loops that they were going through and, and checks were not very efficient, so I managed to optimize those quite a bit. This is what a large explosion looks like. Let me just turn the volume up. Sorry, an ultra explosion. You have to excuse the lag, I'm currently working on that. Though it shouldn't be lagging too much because it's multi-threaded. Oh, you know what? I might be running this in debug mode. Oh no, I am running in release. Fuck. Okay. Let's actually grab the executable and run that. That's quite a bit faster than doing it in Visual Studio. There's um, particle, individual particle collision in the explosions, which I think is pretty cool. Some of these ships are actually starting to explode as well, which is not doing my frame rate many favors. Oh god, there we go. Oh shit. Oh, have we crashed it? I may have killed it. Oh, no, it's alive. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I've got to show you. There's a pause menu now. And you can actually zoom in and out while the pause menu's going on. Uh, options currently doesn't do anything, but save and load, save and exit, those three are, um, are fully functional. Also, one thing worth noting is if you tab out of the game uh, like that, the pause menu will actually show up automatically, which is a interesting little feature, but there you go. We've got more explosions going off in there. I get the feeling that um, the explosions are a bit laggier than they were when I was first testing them. I don't know why that's the case. Um, but that's something I have to uh, Is. It's probably because I'm recording with OBS at the same time. I think that's probably causing a fair bit of lag as well. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Alright, fucking hell. Um, so, yeah, it's worth noting that so if I, if I save now... So I've got 74 bullets and losing a bit of health. That all does get saved when you um, when you save and load. I could show you the save file format. It's nothing too exciting. It's literally just for the sake of debugging. 
Um, it's just reams of of text, um, essentially. It's got it's got a sort of file structure in there if you look at it, but uh, it's not particularly interesting. So, but yeah, I, I think one of the coolest things so far is definitely the the explosions and the uh, the individual particle collision. I've just got to find a way of making it slightly more efficient. Uh, I've already implemented a grid system, grid checking system. Actually, some some of you might be interested in seeing the the code for that. Why don't I show you that? Um, that's in the update explosions function. Yeah, so I am I am actually multi-threading. Um, what I'm multi-threading is explosion spawning, uh, which helps a lot with the. You can't see it right now because I'm recording. It's ruining my frame rate, but it does help a lot with the kind of initial lag when the explosions first get created and then they just suddenly appear. This makes that a lot smoother because it spawns them in 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 a in a thread that's running in parallel, and then that gets updated uh, in the main thread. And I've got uh, I've got a little mutex there that's preventing things from going awry. Um, I haven't multi-threaded the, the explosion updating function yet. I've tried to. It's really... Um, multi-threading is very complicated, as I've discovered. And so, so far, the only thing I managed to do is multi-thread the, the music. Here's the, here's the lambda for that. Um, and then here's the lambda for explosion multi-threading. Anywho, here is the... Um, grid system I'm using. So every every object that has collision or needs to be updated. Obviously, if you're dealing with explosions, you have you know the particle effect and the individual sort of particle swarms within the particle effect, and then the actual particles themselves. So if you're checking ships, you've got the explosion loop, the ship loop, the particle swarm loop. Um, although typically there's only one in here, so this doesn't really count. Oops. And then the particle loop. So, you know, you've got three or four layers of nested four loops, which is incredibly draining on um, on your processing, on the, on the frame rate and speeds. So what you can do is you can implement a kind of grid-like system where every object is assigned a grid, and this stops uh, in, in game coordinates. This stops checking of objects checking collision for objects that are very far away from each other or you know outside of a certain radius from each other and that allows you to just literally in the second nested loop I can just skip completely right from the get-go if uh, if the explosion quadrant is not equal to the the quadrant of the particular ship that I'm, that I'm checking um, and if you want to see the quadrant function Very simple. Um, you've got a maximum uh, quads on the x-axis, maximum quadrants on the x-axis, uh, which is initially set at like 10,000 or something. And then every time the player goes over that limit, it gets set again. So it's x-axis limited, and then it calculates a uh, quadrant number based on the x and y coordinates of the specific thing. Anyway. Probably no one's interested in that, but uh, there you go. That might help to make things a bit more efficient for you. There's no collision currently implemented. For okay. Okay. That's something. <laughs> something bad is happening over there. Um, what I've done there is just spawn a, a station inside a ship, and it's continuously colliding with it. Um, which is unfortunate. Okay, what button is it next? Yeah, it's unfortunate it's lagging so much. Um, it does look pretty cool though, I think. Especially like how you can kind of carve a... You can kind of carve like right through the damn thing. I think that's pretty cool. I think 
the, the sound channels cannot quite keep up, unfortunately. But yeah, every every time you you go through those, you're you're taking um, a little bit of damage every time you hit one of those particles. Um, I am now going at ridiculous speed because I've got this reactor fitted and I've got 100% of all available power going to going to the the engines. So we go at warp speed. I'm actually at the I've set a limit of uh, 7,000 to the X and Y velocities, um, just because it's, it gets a little bit crazy if you don't set a limit. I'm not the, the the controls are really quite clunky at the moment. It's definitely something I need to optimize. It shouldn't take too long though to figure out how to make it a bit more kind of fun and less clunky to to actually control the ships. Um, other things I, I need to implement are obviously enemy spawning. Asteroids, derelict spaceships, stuff to explore, new items, new ships. Um, the kind of core gameplay loop of going out, exploring, trading items between ships, different economic differences between stations, maybe even different planets that you can kind of encounter. Um, and certainly stuff like asteroid fields, stuff with kind of high risk, high reward um, gameplay. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot currently in development. I mean, what are what, what we on the list here? That's just some C++. I was thinking of using OpenGL for the rendering, and I could do a lot of very cool stuff if I did that. But um, it's 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 low level as fuck. Like it's very I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's probably some people out there who, who who find it quite simple. But I think jumping from SDL2 to Open OpenGL is a slightly intimidating. But I'll probably do that. Once I've extracted every last piece of optimization I can out of the explosions, and I st it's still not good enough, I'm probably going to move to OpenGL and, and see what I can do there. Um, I'll probably have some cool lighting and shader effects I can do then as well. Um, so yeah, exploration, work on system with good rewards for exploration, like rare, unique upgrades and weapons and stuff that's only available for when you explore. Also make some unique challenges like rabid AIs and such that attack you. High risk for the best rewards, but also smaller challenges for, for lower tier ships. Um, also need to implement a shipyard where you can go and store your current ship, buy a buy and upgrade a better ship, uh, repair your current ship, stuff like that. Maybe even some customization with, with painting. I don't think it would be too hard at all to do a custom paint job stuff. Um, in fact, I think that'd be really easy because all you'd have to, you, you can even have the player able to to paint their own ships, different colors, like even more like crude paintbrush tools. All you, all you need to do is just take the the mouse input and then uh, color the texture. And then I guess the only difficulty would be, you know, color the texture when the player holds down click and moves the the mouse when they select a certain color. Then you have to save the texture dynamically as, you know, in some sort of false structure or something. But yeah, that there's definitely something I could add as well. Um, lighting effects is something I want to add. Um, combat reloading indicator and make the UI look a bit better as well. Because um, the moment, it, I mean, this doesn't look great. This doesn't look great. It's it's sufficing for sort of debug purposes, but uh, it's not not the best. Um, challenges: pirate spawns, derelict ship spawns, uh, different attacks on different sectors. I need to flesh out the faction system, so there's different kind of warring factions and stuff like that. Um, missile type weapons as well is going to be a big thing, as well as a targeting system on enemy ships to display hull and armor stats and what faction they're in, stuff like that. Um, and eventually you'll be able to upgrade your ship to give you more information when you select uh, when you select an enemy ship or target an enemy ship. Implement music, that's actually already done. Engine startup sounds, yeah, I've got to, got to fix that, it's not great. Uh, pause menu needs to be finished. I think there's no physics. Fix that. Yeah, a couple of bugs I need to fix. Um, economic differences in pricing between stations to allow for trading. That's that's quite a big one. Um, that's going to be based on factors like proximity to certain resources and um, you know proximity to certain planets, even proximity to trade routes. How many merchants actively trade the station? Um, that's another thing.
So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, asteroids as well, man. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff I have planned. Um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestions or any questions or anything, please feel free to leave a comment um, and let me know. And yeah, other than that, just stay tuned. I'll, I'll have another update, hopefully pretty soon. Um, and maybe even a playable version, like very early alpha version of the game that people can pick up and, and mess around with if they want to. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. And uh, I'll see you again, hopefully pretty soon.